Finally, you've gotten that face-to-face -face job interview, but from the comfort of your home. However, are you camera ready? Well, most people think they are, but the reality is that there are many things that you need to consider when doing a web conference call that I'm going to help you with today to put your best foot forward. Hey, I'm Michael Robinson and welcome to my channel where we talk about everything relating to one's career based on my two and a half decades experience having owned and operated my own staffing company on Wall Street. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to get updates on upcoming shows and things that you will need to help move your career forward. On today's show, we're going to be talking about how to prepare for a Zoom call. Now, has anyone heard of Zoom prior to the pandemic? Well, I haven't, but it has become the platform where everyone is using these days to do conference calls, interviews, chatting with friends, even yoga classes. Prior to that, you've heard of Skype, you've heard of WebEx, and there are other kinds of industry-specific platforms that companies use. And chances are you're going to be using one of those when you have your first face-to-face -face job interview moving forward. Now today we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how to prepare for this. It sounds like a simple proposition. Turn on the computer, look into the camera and talk. But guess what? It's not. You have competition out there. You have people who know how to use the Zoom to their advantage. So I'm going to give you 10 things that you should consider, not consider, implement moving forward when planning your next video call interview. Number one, make sure your space is clean, clear, and clutter-free because you are inviting the interviewer into your home and therefore it should reflect your personality. Number two, lighting. Understand where the light is in that room. Is it coming from one or two windows? which is the brightest, what time of day is the interview going to be? Because remember, the morning sun is different from the midday sun compared to the afternoon and the evening sun. So know the time of day, know where the light is coming from, and always, always make sure that you are facing that light and that your back is not against the light because it reflects favorably upon you if the light is in your face. Well, not in your face where you're blind, but the light is coming to your face indirectly. Now, a lot of times we may not have enough light coming from our window. For example, in my studio, the light is coming from the window here, but I have a lot of studio lights that helps to make up for the light being one-sided and the reason why I cannot face the light is because there's a huge desk with lots of computers and stuff on it. And this is just the best position for the desk and guests interviewing with me. So my situation is a little different as it would be in a newsroom or a, a radio station or something like that. But in your case, make sure that you're facing the light. And if you don't have enough light, then buy something that supplements your lighting. Now, there are inexpensive lights on Amazon, and I'm not one to promote a product for any reason, but I have used this lighting before, and it's a circular light like this, and it's very inexpensive, and it's very effective. Uh, it's good if you have a cell phone, for example, and you can put it in the center of the cell phone, or put the cell phone in the center of the light and it just frames your face beautifully. It's also good if you're using a computer to make sure that uh, it reflects the light from the top of the computer onto your face and it's, it's a flattering light, to be honest, and it's not expensive. Number three, the camera angle is important. Now, camera angles are key because I've seen too many times where the camera is way too close or it is so far away that you're trying to figure out where the person is from the other objects. 
So you want it to be about maybe three feet from where you are sitting, especially if you're going to be using your cell phone or if you're using a laptop. Uh, the location of your body, this is another thing. So anything from your chest up is good. You don't want to see more than that. Uh, so make sure that the camera angle is straight so it's looking at you and it's not at a bent angle downwards or upwards, but it's just straight ahead and you're looking right into it. Number four, think about the audio. The audio is super, super important. Just as it's, just as it's important to see the person, it's important to hear the person. So make sure your audio is clean, clear, and crisp. A lot of cameras in cell phones have mics. A lot of computers have built-in mics. Laptops have built-in mics. But oftentimes, if you rely on the mics in your computer or your cell phones, the mics also pick up noise in the room. It could be a fan, for example, or an AC that's blowing in the distance or other ambient noises. For example, it could be somebody walking in the street that you have no control over speaking loudly or a siren. So the mics tend to isolate your voice so it's a lot more crisp and clear and it's attachable to your cell phone or it may be a cordless mic, that's fine too. But definitely make sure your audio is something that you are using that is a connectable device to your equipment, whether it's directly or indirectly. And don't rely on the built-in mics in your technology. Number five, your backdrop is important. Now, remember I mentioned the space being clean and clutter-free. Uh, the other thing that people often ask me is, what should I put in the background? Should I stand against a clear wall? Now, how boring it is to stand there or sit there and the wall behind you is a blank white wall, right? I mean, it's fine, I'm sure. But personally speaking, I like to see what's going on behind the scenes. I want to know more about this person. So being able to have a cute photo of the family, maybe the kids or the dog or maybe your spouse or your family, it's kind of cute. It's, it makes it more personal. It makes you more relatable, right? Maybe something that's related to what you do as a hobby, a tennis racket on a shelf or a beautiful vase that you bought at your last vacation or flea market or maybe a book that you read or a couple of books that you read that might be uh, inspiring for you that you might want to have on the shelf behind you. So the backdrop is kind of important because the interviewer is going to be looking at you, but trust me, 60% of the time he or she will be trying to decipher the background behind you. So have things behind that are relatable, whether you use a shelf to um, highlight your personality, your family, or whatever that might be, that's good. Or whether you use a painting, like I'm using a Bethesda Fountain from Central Park. I had this painting commissioned about 22 years ago and I love the painting because it's all about New York. It's about the people. It's about the vibe. It's, it's water flowing. There's an angel on top. It's everything that I love. Trees in the background. So I love the painting and I use it in a lot of my video shoots, but you know, I'll change it up from time to time. However, what I'm saying to you is try not to use a blank wall because that's just super boring. Use a nice shelving or a painting or photos of, of your family or friends or photos that you like that reflects you favorably. It kind of adds a nice touch to the impersonal interview, you know, in a way that allows the person to connect with you on a more personal level. Number six, test your equipment before the interview. So call a friend and say, hey, Michael, I want to test this. I want to make sure that everything works. I want to make sure the lighting works, the audio works. I want to make sure that I'm the right distance from the camera because I really, really want to ace this interview. So call your friend up and let that person 
talk to you, see how you look and hear how you sound, have it recorded because a lot of these platforms allow you to record the interview. So do the testing before because trust me, you don't want to have a technical failure the moment you're about to go on camera or during the interview. Make sure your network is secure. Make sure that your equipment is working, the lighting is in place. Uh, make sure you've gone over your resume. And if you want to light a candle, you know, this is something I say to people all the time. If a candle soothes you and makes you feel more comfortable, light a candle and put it in front of you. Just don't burn down your house, you know, but just do whatever it takes to make you feel calm and relaxed. Maybe get a nice crystal or um, certainly don't play any music in the background. Somebody said to me, oh, should I play some nice jazz? No, please don't play music. But certainly do things that make you feel comfortable and relaxed and allows you to let your personality come through the camera and shine. Number seven, good posture. Because remember, it may not come through in your mind if you're slouching, but trust me, somebody can see that you're slouching versus if you sit up and you pull your shoulders back and you make sure your neck is really nice and relaxed and your shoulders are relaxed, you speak better, you feel more comfortable, you breathe better. So make sure your posture is nice and relaxed, your eyes are illuminated, your eyes are smiling, have a smile on your face. Nobody loves anyone with a scowl or a frown or, you know, so your, your posture is important. Number eight, dress appropriately. It's an interview on camera. And you've seen those commercials before where something happens and the person gets up and suddenly you realize that, yeah, he's wearing a shirt and tie and a jacket but he's wearing boxers, you know, because the person has to get up because something accidentally fell on the floor. And suddenly the, the interviewer is seeing the rest of the individual. So dress for the interview because you never know what can happen. You might have to get up unexpectedly for some reason, maybe to turn off the light or close the door or or whatever happens in the interview interview so just imagine that this is actually an interview and dress for it and sit in front of the camera dressed for that interview whether it's wearing a suit or a shirt and slacks or uh, whatever it might be that you are going to be wearing for the interview dress for it number nine is probably one of the most important things that i can tell you right now uh, well everything i've told you is important but this is one of the most important things is where to cast your eyes because a lot of times I've seen this with my own eyes even on television with professional people who should know better they're having an interview with a journalist or someone and they're constantly looking at the the screen of the laptop because that's where their face is so instead of looking into the camera they're looking at the screen and they're talking to the person and they're looking at themselves because, hey, we love to look at ourselves, right? So we're looking at ourselves, but the camera is seeing us looking at ourselves. Now think about it. If you're interviewing and the person is looking at you, they want to see your eyeballs looking at them. So just imagine that little tiny hole that is on your cell phone or your laptop or your computer, that that is the interviewer and that's what you should be looking at. So you'll never see me looking up at myself because my confidence monitor is up there. So I could be looking up at myself and then below the camera is my teleprompter. So I could be looking down at the teleprompter and talking to you. How impersonal is that, right? So always, 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 I never look at my teleprompter and I never look at my monitor because I kind of know this is what you're getting, right? And I know what I'm talking about, so I don't really need to look at the teleprompter. Uh, I'm not that forgetful. So look into the camera and speak. Now, what that means is that you need to know what is on your resume. And I say to people all the time, make sure you know your resume like the back of your hand. 
because you don't want to be glancing away at the resume and looking at the camera. It's a bit distracting. It almost looks like you don't know what you have on your resume. So know your resume like the back of your hand and speak upon your job title, your history, your skill sets professionally, flawlessly, confidently, securely, and look into the camera as you do this. It makes you seem confident. It makes you seem knowledgeable. It makes you seem more aware of what it is you're doing and it is more impressive than if you're constantly fidgeting and looking out of the window, looking up at the ceiling or looking over at the door because maybe your kid is at the door or the dog might be rubbing against the door. Just ignore the dog. Just ignore the kid. Just ignore whatever is happening in the room. The focus is the camera. Look at the camera, even if the building is burning down. Well, maybe you should get out then, but focus at the camera all the time during the interview. And I'm not saying you shouldn't glance away every now and then and glance back to the camera. That's fine. I mean, you don't want to be keeping your eyes focused on the camera without naturally blinking or turning a bit. But when you're speaking, speak into the camera and it comes across a lot more authentic. It comes across a lot more genuine, more relatable and more likable, believe it or not. And number 10 is smile. You know, it's a job interview and you're relating to another person and people like it when you are happy and positive. When you smile, you give across a certain sense of confidence and likability. Now, I'm not saying that you should be smiling for the entire interview. It's absolutely impossible. But have a smile in your head or in your face or in your eyes and come across as someone who knows what they're talking about, who is confident about what they're saying, who is likable, who is relatable, someone who that person on the other end of the camera can feel, I like that individual. I want to get to know him or her better. So smile, use your eyes, use your lips, use your cheeks, use your forehead, whatever it takes, come across in a very positive, energetic, likable manner. Ah, that's the other thing, be energetic, right? You don't wanna have low energy because low energy is gonna make me fall asleep. So make sure your energy level is up. Even if you have to sip a little bit of coffee before, if you feel tired that morning and you feel, oh my goodness, I'm not ready for the interview, take two or three minutes and take a couple of really deep cleansing breaths to energize your body and give you that energy you need. If you need to sip some coffee before or have an energy drink, do that. But cleansing breaths are absolutely one of the most revitalizing things you can do for your body. Open the window, go by the window or open the door and just take some really clear, deep cleansing, slow breaths and just Feel that oxygen, that pranayama energizing your body and your mind and stimulating your brain and preparing you for that interview. And relax your body, you know. If you feel tense in your shoulders, you know, relax your shoulders, shake them out a little bit, roll your head around a couple of times. You know, you may look like a crazy person, but the bottom line is that you are relaxing your body, center your mind, breathe deeply, think positively, and remember, this is your opportunity to put your best foot forward and you only got one. So this is it. This is your moment to shine. Remember lights, camera, action, ready. All right. So until next time, thank you for joining us. Let me know your thoughts and ideas. Let me know how the process is coming along and feel free to click the subscribe button to subscribe to my channel and uh, keep me posted on how things are going along for you. Remember, think like an entrepreneur because remember, business people are successful because they make their realities a possibility by thinking them into action. So you can make your job a reality by being prepared and thinking it into action. Think like an entrepreneur and you'll succeed in your career. Be well until next time.